Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be reviewing the TCT7H full color multifunctional tester. Despite its compact size, the device boasts an impressive range of features. One of its key functionalities is as an LCR tester, making it efficient for testing inductors, resistors, and capacitors. Additionally, it is capable of measuring various transistors, including BJTs and MOSFETs. However, do note that when testing an IGBT, I found that it wasn't compatible. Beyond that, the TCT7H can measure triads, thyristors, zener diodes up to 30 volts, and evaluate LED forward voltages. A standout feature is its integrated IR tester, allowing you to test the functionality of the infrared remotes with ease. As you can see, it has a 3-inch display and here you have a start button, an IR sensor, and notably a ZIF or zero insertion force connector. Simply raise the pulley to insert a component and then lower it back down to secure the component in place. Upon my purchase, the package included a micro USB charger cable highlighting the device is rechargeable. Along with that, there were jumper wires fitted with three plungers, probably designed for ease of insertion into the ZIF connector and subsequent component attachment. They generously provided a red LED and a 0.1 microfarad 50 volt capacitor, likely for testing purposes, a thoughtful touch on their part. Additionally, there's a jumper shunt for self-testing. To initialize the self-test mode, ensure the lever is in the raised position. Attach the jumper shunt to pins 1, 2 and 3. Lower the lever, press the start button. The device will prompt you to isolate the probe and the test progresses until it reaches 100% signaling the completion. Now as the device progresses with its self-test, let's prepare our oscilloscope to observe how it measures various components. Subsequently, we will test the components directly. Here's my signal probe, I'll connect it to the red plunger. Importantly, polarity isn't a concern here, whether it's capacitors, transistors, triacs, or thyristors. The meter is designed to measure without any specific polarity requirements. For our oscilloscope settings, we have set it at 2 volts per vertical division. Each horizontal division represents a span of 100 milliseconds. When the jumper wires are connected to the multifunctional tester and the start button is pressed, visible pulses oscillate between positive and negative. Let us take a look at that again. Now that we have set up the oscilloscope, let's move it out of the way and see the meter in action with different components. Let's begin by testing a transistor. By the way, the meter automatically shuts off in about 22 to 25 seconds. In that case, we need to turn on the meter by pressing the start button again. Remember, when connecting the transistor, begin at the far left and use the first three consecutive pins. Once the test is complete, the meter identifies it as a BGT NPN transistor. We get readings like voltage base emitter shown as VBE, gain indicated by HFE, and the collector current denoted as IC. Now if I flip the transistor and turn the meter back on, you will see the same values. However, the pin indications change. Pin 1 becomes the emitter and pin 3 is the collector. Switch it back and they flip. As you can see, the pin 3 becomes the emitter and pin 1 becomes the collector here. Next, let's test an SCR or thyristor. Once connected and we give it a moment, it identifies the component as a thyristor. It shows the anode, cathode, and gate pins with a forward voltage reading of 761 millivolts. Now let's test a MOSFET. I'm using an IRF3205 MOSFET. Keep in mind, it is not a logic level MOSFET. Um, as you can see that its threshold voltage stands at 1.84 volts. This is where it begins to conduct, though it might not be fully at this point. The meter displays the RDS on, representing the resistance between the drain and source. We also see values like the gate capacitance level as CG. 
What if I flip the MOSFET? The meter handles it with no issue at all. A word of caution, these pin assignments are specific to transistors, psi resistors, and triacs. Avoid connecting zener diodes or capacitors in this manner. Next, we will test another thyristor. This has a TO92 package resembling a transistor. The meter detects it with precision. Now on a triac, let's see the reading. The meter identifies it as a triac with, with an 836 millivolt forward voltage drop. The VF notation is a bit ambiguous here. I'm not entirely certain about its exact meaning. Now let's measure the forward voltage of some LEDs. Let's start with this red LED. The LED can be inserted in this ZIF connector. And if you now press down the start button, the LED blinks and the meter measures a capacitance of 4 picofarad and forward voltage drop of 1.97 volts, which is true for this red LEDs. Now let's reverse the LED and connect in the same ZIF pins. And we can see that the LED still blinks and measures, so the polarity of the LED doesn't really matter. It checks in both polarity as we have seen with our scope. Now let's change the pins again and connect to pins we have measured transistors before. And we can see that it still works just fine. Let's now test a green LED which should have something like 2.6, 2.7 forward voltage drop and yes it is. And now if I connect a yellow one again, it measures to 2.01 volts. Let's connect the blue one. And wait a bit. And it measures to 2.69 volts, which is closer to the green LED. And now let's test some capacitors. They gave me this small little capacitor for free with this metal. This is 0.1 microfarad cap. Let's connect it to this part here. Oh no, I have just bent the pins, but that's okay. So you can see that we have 108.9 nanofarad capacitance here with ESR measured to 10 ohms and a V loss of 1.5%. Let's now put a 330 nanofarad high voltage X2 capacitor here. It is very important to make sure that the capacitor is not charged. I'm going to discharge it with this metal piece here to make sure the capacitor is discharged completely. It is not going to fit in here so I'm going to use the plungers given with the meter. I'm going to use the orange and the green one. First, let's hook up the jumper pins and then let's connect the orange and the green plunger to the capacitor carefully. Now if you press the start button, it detects the capacitor as a 324 nanofarad capacitor with an ESR of 0 0.07 ohms, which is not bad, is it? Now let's remove these jumpers and test some inductors. Here I have an inductor with I think 100 microhenry value, but there's no indication. If you put the inductor in this mirror and press the start button, it is detected as 0 0.1 millihenry or 100 microhenry inductor with an ESR of about 0.46 ohms. Now let's connect another one. And I think this is 10 millihenry just by the size that I have in here. Looks like it is 1.1 millihenry or 1 millihenry actually with an ESR of 45.3 ohms, which is quite high. Now let's connect the other one that I have from Bones, which is 47 millihenry. It is also has that written on this H string here. Now let's press the start button and we can see that it is 43.6 millihenry with an ESR of 111.5 ohms. Now I haven't measured the frequency so far, 
but it will probably be 1 kilohertz which is standard amongst cheap LCR emitters with low frequency switching options like this. Now let's test few resistor values. Here I have an MTC thermistor of 10 ohms to begin with. Let's plug it across pin 1 and 3 and press the start button. As you can see it is detected as 11.3 ohms resistor but if you heat it up of course the resistance will be lower because it's an NTC thermistor. Now let's see a resistor of 4.7 kilo ohms. This is not a precision resistor by the way, it has around 5% tolerance so it is going to be a little bit off of course. As you can see it is detected as 4543 ohms resistor. Now here I have a very high value 10 mega ohm resistor with 1% tolerance and if I insert it and run the test it is detected as 10 mega ohms bang on which is fantastic isn't it. Now let's start measuring a few more capacitors. Let's start with this 22 microfarad capacitor here, connect it. and wait for a few seconds it is detected as 23.34 microfarad capacitor which is pretty close to 24 microfarad and it has an ESR value of 0.09 ohms and VLOS of 0.9 percent let's now connect another 0.1 microfarad disk capacitor and it is detected as 87.08 nanofarads. We also have the VLOS of 3.4% but I don't see the ESR here. Now let's connect a 40 nanofarad capacitor. And as you can see it is detected as 35.88 nanofarad capacitor with a VLOS of 0.7%. Now let's take a closer look at some PCB images of this TCT87 unit. To be honest, it's a quite a neat circuit. The chip they are using is at mega 324PA, which operates at a voltage range of 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts. It features a 32 kilobyte of flash memory, multiple communication interfaces, and an 8 channel 10 bit A to D converter, which is ideal for complex embedded applications like this meter. So, even though the meter is quite cheap, costing 2822 rupees, it is still very handy to measure multitude of components ranging from triacs, SCRs, low voltage LEDs, TVS and Zener diodes, capacitors, resistors, inductors and so on. It also helps you decoding IR signals from your remote. The precision isn't that bad as we have seen and the circuitry is also quite nice as well. The unit is of course rechargeable, they have provided us with a micro USB port for the recharge purpose and also a small micro USB cable. To be honest, I'd be really happy to see USB-C in the future because that lasts quite long over micro USB ports. But this is what it is and it is quite cheap as well so I don't mind and I don't need to really charge this like every single day or something like that. So that's it for this video, I hope that you liked the video, if so please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions or suggestions please don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. Until then have a great day, bye.